last year in July, I had the privilege to visit Tuvalu and Kiribati as the first special rapporteur uh, to these countries. Regarding Tuvalu, the effects of climate change are increasing and will further increase the country's vulnerability. All of the Palestinians in all parts of the occupied Palestinian territories have been receiving far lesser quantities of water than they should. In the West Bank, a policy of water apartheid means that water resources are channeled mostly for Israeli use, including use in settlements, in violation of international law. I give the floor to the President of United Nations Watch. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the Special Rapporteur for Safe Drinking Water for her reports on Kiribati and Tuvalu, whose challenges are worthy of international support. Madam Rapporteur, we would like to ask if you would also be prepared to examine the humanitarian catastrophe now taking place in Syria. According to UNICEF, 10 million people, close to half the population, lack secure access to safe water. Supplies of chlorine have fallen dangerously low, increasing tap water contamination. Access to sanitation and hygiene is deteriorating, threatening the health of much of the population. Madam Rapporteur, UNICEF also reports that children are at particular risk of contracting diarrhea and other waterborne diseases. Power cuts, fuel shortages, damage to infrastructure cause worsening water shortages. In Al Qusayr, water was completely cut off in April when pro government Hezbollah fighters took control of the local water plant. Madam Rapporteur, as the expert on the right to water and sanitation, is there any particular reason why the devastating water crisis in Syria is not mentioned in your report this year, nor in any of your previous reports? Have you ever requested to visit Syria or nearby countries to hear testimony from refugees? Now, I see on your UN website that in the past few years, you have issued 54 statements. Only one dealt with Syria, a joint statement from two and a half years ago, which you signed with six other experts. Madam Rapporteur, we appreciate your reports on the islands of Kiribati and Tuvalu. At the same time, one cannot help but note that the island of Kiribati has one of the smallest populations in the world. Tuvalu has even less, a total population of 10,000. By any measure, Madam Rapporteur, these are among the tiniest places on the face of the earth. I therefore wish to ask, by what logic and methodology should we be devoting the scarce and limited time and attention of this world body to the climate change challenges of Kiribati and Tuvalu, genuine and important as they are, instead of the life and death humanitarian crisis that is affecting the water, sanitation, and health of millions of victims across Syria and of millions of Syrian refugees in surrounding countries. Three years into the escalating massacre of 100,000 people, over 100,000 people. Why is it that we have heard only a handful of statements on Syria by all of this council's human rights experts? Three weeks after more than 1,000 people, including 400 children, were gassed to death in Damascus, why has this human rights council refused to convene a single emergency session or urgent debate? Will the special rapporteur on human rights and hazardous substances from whom we just heard, consider addressing Syria's stockpile of sarin gas? I don't say this council is doing nothing. There is a debate on Monday that was scheduled long ago. But where is the sense of urgency? Where is the sense of outrage? Thank you, Mr. President.